All right, um, our last session of the weekend teaching and uh, thank you. <clears throat> uh, let's begin with um, um, one minute meditation, thinking that we are doing uh, its last session of uh, teaching and question and answer for the benefit of all sentient beings to achieve enlightenment. And uh, let's uh, meditate. And whatever we came in, mental state, uh, whatever mental state we are in, so let's uh, transform into compassion and bodhicitta. In order to uh, give a rise to uh, authentic uh, bodhicitta and compassion, it is very crucial to pray to uh, Buddha and Bodhisattvas, lineage masters, our root and gurus. So please recite uh, lineage prayer with me and page three. <clears throat> Dohoje Jaje de Lonar Maba Mehila Jaje Gombo Dohoje Gaje Grama
thinking that we are <clears throat> having this uh, last session for the benefit of all sentient beings to achieve enlightenment. And uh, let's uh, chant together the six pado, uh, the root verse on six padus from the Therma of Kamalimba with Shutro uh, <clears throat> melody. 
Continuing uh, this morning's teaching, and uh, uh, that was uh, uh, the fourth pado on page two, last line it says, Kema, now when the pado of dying is dawning. Dani upon me, I will abandon all grasping, yearning, and attachment. Enter undistracted uh, state in which the instructions are clear. And uh, as we discussed that uh, the attachment and distraction at the time of death, especially a practitioner uh, is uh, must be abandoned. And 
Uh, we support this uh, practitioner. Someone practiced uh, meditation, someone practiced uh, power uh, to uh, uh, reduce uh, uh, you know, uh, distractions. And that's why you know, when Kimberumbuche, we ask someone is uh, at the deathbed and uh, especially close to <clears throat> death. And he always asks us to, if, you know, uh, for practitioners, uh, uh, chill um, the, the relatives and uh, friends, uh, not to talk about, uh, you know, uh, or crying in the deathbed and simply uh, <clears throat> give time and also uh, uh, Rinpoche produced this called Pado Kit or Pado Blanket. Uh, there's a whole uh, mandala of uh, wrathful and peaceful deities. The one <clears throat> covers entire uh, body. And then also there is a small pouch that uh, uh, you can put on the neck. And uh, also, uh, before they pass, you we give uh, some blessing pills uh, in their mouth if it's uh, allowed or able to access. And also, in that uh, <clears throat> uh, or in that particular bag contains some scents we call poor scents, and uh, those can be placed on on top of uh, uh, their head uh, where the uh, you know the Brahma. Upper chaff Brahma, where they eject uh, consciousness. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, if uh, the individual who is uh, uh, dying have the ability to do power, uh, that would be the best. Uh, uh, even the person does have the ability, but it's important for uh, lamas or friends who knows about power uh, to visualize and support uh, and uh, uh, once they looks like uh, already passed away and, uh, you know, breathing stops uh, uh, and uh, uh, that is the external breath stops, but internal uh, breath is not uh, stopped. Uh, and uh, so uh, if there's a, a choice or freedom that... Uh, you know, we uh, always uh, recommend or ask uh, the nurses or others uh, not to touch their body. Uh, I'm talking about only if this is, uh, you know, practitioner. And uh, lamas or dhamma friends, uh, you know, traditionally touch, uh, you know, on upper part, upper chair of, uh, you know, uh, the, the head or uh, towards the uh, uh, head. <clears throat> And uh, when I was in Tibet, you know, one of my close uh, uh, Dhamma friend or monk who we took, uh, <clears throat> we took a vow together and he had this, uh, you know, lung cancer. And then uh, I was in Dhamma school. And uh, so he was very sick and I went to, I had like uh, four days uh, vacation and I went to see him in the hospital and, uh, you know, he had this really, really like uh, uh, fever and his fever was so high that, you know, I also get, you know, and really hot and I constantly clean. And uh, even though he was a monk, he didn't have all these instructions uh, and neither do I. <laughs> so I can't remind much to him. Uh, but what I did was, uh, you know, uh, when the doctor says, you know, he will no longer live and so we took to the monastery and uh, so i stayed with him sleep with him uh, next to his bed and then uh, <clears throat> i basically hold his hands i could see that you know his last breath uh, released and then you know uh, the tear comes from his eyes and uh, i just uh, reset it come up you know come up you know come up you know come up you know so when you know when he passed because he wasn't really like someone did three year retreat or any like a special experiences so he, his face was kind of pale and when I reset come up you know come up you know and uh, there was this moment of a uh, transition that his face was more you know alive and vivid he was in meditation 
but it was very peaceful. Uh, so even someone you know doesn't have poor uh, experiences, but Dharma friends always could uh, help. Uh, and uh, and then of course uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, then uh, uh, when this uh, uh, you know uh, external breath stops and. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, some people think, oh, he already passed away, she already passed away. Uh, and then you check uh, this, uh, you know, uh, what do you call? Pulse, yeah, pulse. And some people actually stop the external breath, but pulse still uh, moving. And according to Kim Rinpoche, you know, the, and the actual, you know, external, uh, you know, kind of breath stops, really death is, you know, once the pulse stops, but still, and the internal uh, uh, and, uh, breath is not, uh, uh, you know, finished. So it takes a while to really decease. And once you, uh, uh, you know, die, and then uh, uh, slowly the it's not, uh, you know, uh, your friend or the guru can kind of, you know, see it, but uh, the person who did, you know, who's dying able to experience uh, uh, the uh, different stages of uh, experience during the time of death, uh, that is, uh, uh, you know, dissolution of earth, dissolution of, uh, of fire, there's the different lights, uh, you know, uh, experience, uh, dissolution of uh, wind, dissolution of uh, uh, water, and uh, then the consciousness, uh, you know, uh, for a while, uh, basically, uh, <clears throat> uh, there's no any grasp and basically you know uh, when a physical body dies because consciousness is the, the physical body is so connected and there's a kind of a shock that uh, your mind is totally you know not active uh, can't think anything simply blank and when that happens and uh, then next uh, you know when the consciousness will you know arise that will be the clear light uh, so that's why you know in this uh, uh, liturgy it says uh, and transfer my own awareness into the sphere of end bone space that is the ultimate uh, power which means simply rest Rest in that very vivid, clear light. That's where the tudam or the, you know, say someone is in meditation, that's where the meditation happens because, uh, you know, when a person who did a lot of shamatha meditation or vipassana meditation, the, the experience of, uh, you know, the meditation, the mother clear light at that time is very, very uh, intense, the very, uh, for practitioners, you know, easier to recognize because it's so uh, the experience very intensifies. And uh, then your child clear light, which means that the meditation you did, so able to uh, unite and then recognize. Then you know you be in uh, meditation, and uh, when a person uh, like practitioner be in meditation, uh, not always. It doesn't always mean that you have to sit up, you know, whether you are leaning or whether you are uh, sleeping for this case, like uh, my uncle Lama Sona, when he passed away, uh, <clears throat> I heard that one of the uh, Hungarian attendant, you know, went to talk to him and he was making jokes and then uh, you know, uh, slowly was peaceful, and he kind of leaned over. He put his hand like a Buddha sleeping like this, and then he passed away. Uh, and uh, so he was in meditation for three days. And uh, for example, like Kimbrumbuche, you know, he wasn't sitting up like you know the moment he passed, like sitting up. No, he was laying down on his uh, bed, and then. Uh, you know, when they check, he was in the meditation, so we don't disturb him uh, and just don't disturb those practitioners. So that's why, you know, if there's a, a kind of a situation allows, uh, should really leave the body at least to three days. And I know like in the West, you know, in a hospital, sometimes not easy, right? You have to 
uh, you know, move or something. And uh, so that's the that's where actually you know recognition happens when all these uh, uh, <clears throat> elements dissolve, then clear light arise and uh, are then able to <clears throat> uh, uh, recognize the nature of mind. And uh, uh, similarly, you know, when 16 Gamapa passed away, you know, he wasn't also like put up like meditation, but he was uh, in, <clears throat> you know, also like a kind of sleeping um, uh, position. And, uh, and then he was in meditation and then someone uh, called Kalurambuji, the previous Kalurambuji said, uh, he's not sitting up, what should we do? <laughs> 16 come up and Kalurambuji said, you know, whether he's sit, uh, sitting or sleeping or, you know, whatever he does, he's always instead of clear light. So don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> so th those are, you know, beyond, uh, you know, um, kind of a question or beyond, uh, you know, explanation. And uh, so that is uh, at the time of death, uh, something we can also, you know, Actually, the interesting part is that it, when we go to sleep, a sleep state, you know, it's a similar to time of the death. You know, when you go to sleep and normally, you know, uh, if you are very tired, you may not be able to do much. You know, the moment you put on, you know, had you on pillow, you just, uh, you know, <clears throat> start snoring. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, but it's always like uh, exercise and, you know, learning. So, which means that... Uh, our normal sleep, you know, we when we start to sleep and uh, we kind of uh, be aware, uh, bring awareness because uh, it is exactly happen. It's exactly the same thing that happens at the time of death. Your consciousness, uh, you know, the, your elements kind of you know dissolve a little bit, and then you know those all the lights uh, arise even though we don't recognize and then at the at the end you know we fall asleep when we fall asleep consciousness generally you know uh, uh, just like a you know uh, just like death it's a uh, completely gone you know it's uh, the consciousness uh, is mind is actually in tibetan we call jalwa jalwa basically means fainted there's no activity of consciousness uh, uh, but of course, you know, we have all kinds of dreams is because of your habitual patterns arise. And so that is uh, considered a perfect, uh, you know, exercise every time you go to sleep and then there's that dissolution happens. And uh, you know, if you are aware and you may be able to recognize and then maybe you're able to recognize that when consciousness, uh, you know, uh, you know, fall to sleep and then slowly you know, uh, uh, able to, you know, uh, arise the, you know, arise the clear light and then able to recognize it. That's where a lot of masters, great masters are able to uh, recognize the nature of mind or the dream, dream yoga practice happens. <clears throat> and uh, then it says, as I am about to leave this compound body of flesh and blood, I will know it to be a, transitory illusion. So that is, uh, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's kind of a little bit of opposite because it should think that concept should be before uh, the uh, eject consciousness or recognition of, uh, you know, uh, clear light. So generally clear light is uh, something happens often, uh, uh, like uh, when you uh, fall to sleep or uh, there are other occasions, you know, uh, they are explaining about if you, uh, for example, like when you do meditation and if you have a good meditation, absorption or you know, exactly happens. You are entering into this, uh, you know, uh, total seas of, uh, uh, of uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, thoughts. And then uh, there's a transition of, uh, if you are able to, absorb, you know, when you read about the biography, somebody, you know, able to absorb in meditation and a long time, you know, sometimes you didn't notice how much time you spent. So those individuals can also experience uh, the uh, dissolution of your 
uh, four elements and then a <clears throat> you know clear light uh, you know uh, etc so that is uh, you know uh, time of the death and the next is uh, pado of uh, damata uh, it says kema now when the pado of uh, damata is dawning upon me i will abandon all fear and terror recognizing whatever appears as the nature display of awareness. <clears throat> I will know it to be the way the spado uh, unfolds. So what you are really <clears throat> experiencing is uh, three kayas. Uh, you know, at the time of death, dissolution of uh, physical elements, and then, uh, you know, arise the Clear light is the Dhammakaya power, the power of Dhammakaya. <clears throat> and then uh, once you miss that, and then uh, there will be, uh, you know, you're experiencing all these uh, different lights and uh, especially different uh, deities, the wrathful and peaceful deities. And uh, that's why, you know, people practice uh, wrathful, peaceful deity practice, you know, Mahakala, Kamapashi, you know, all these uh, different deities, because if you are a deity practitioner, and once you visual, once you go into this Dhammadhatu Pado, Dhammata, Pado Dhammata, and when you see all those lights, especially you see the image of deities, and uh, you immediately recognize them, and then you liberate as a Sambhogakaya, which means uh, you recognize them as a wisdom deity. They are no longer uh, you know, terrifying or something, uh, you know, like that. But normal individual, when all these, uh, you know, the wrathful, peaceful deities, they are not coming from anywhere. It's come from your own physical body. You know, our body is uh, embodiment in pure sense, embodiment of wrathful and peaceful deities. So they arise, and your own, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, within arise these peaceful and wrathful deities and uh, normal people will be terrified and then they kind of hide and you know go somewhere there's a very like a uh, kind of a not so clear light there are a lot of different doors they just go through uh, those and then you know they go to different uh, <clears throat> you know uh, they miss those opportunities so that's why you know it says uh, i will know it to be where that Pado unfold, uh, now that I have reached this uh, moment, moment, momentous, <laughs> crucial, <laughs> uh, crucial point, uh, I will not fear this natural manifestation, the peaceful and wrathful deities. So uh, this is, uh, I think the, the six uh, Pado, the root, this you should chant every day, kind of contemplate and uh, should be part of your practice. It's not that long, and you can chant nicely, or you can chant through. You know, read the English, and uh, you'll be very prepared at the time of uh, death. Uh, and not only at the time of death, but also like uh, you know, during the during the during uh, our life, that you know, we could see Pado is uh, part of everything. <clears throat> And uh, so, yeah, so, and uh, that is uh, mainly recognition of, uh, it is also mentioned that uh, not only the wrathful and peaceful deities, but if you are, uh, you know, practicing other different deities, uh, you could, they also could appear uh, at, you know, uh, in, in Dhamma, uh, Pado of Dhammata, and so you are able to recognize. And so the wrathful and peaceful deities, there are a lot of them, you know, they have all kind of uh, uh, features, you know, mainly a lot of animal heads, and, you know, sometimes it's important to, you know, view them, how they look like, so you know, once uh, they are arise, appear, so we won't be, um, you know, terrified. And then last 
that is the Sambhogakaya uh, poa or Sambhogakaya <coughs> practice of poa. The last is the Nirmanikaya. It says, uh, Now when the battle of becoming is dawning upon me, I will concentrate my mind with single-pointed determination, strive to prolong the results of good karma, uh, close the entrance to rebirth and try to keep from being reborn. This is the time when pers perseverance and pure perception are required. Abandon jealousy and meditate on the master and the consort. So when we miss that opportunity, and then uh, the last is you know the last opportunity is to take rebirth, and uh, so there will be when you go through pado, you know, uh, and there will be a lot of uh, different uh, lights and different uh, you know, drawers. You know, you can see some different drawers. Some of them are very very bright, etc., and some of them are you know very. Uh, uh, you know, kind of weak lights or like blurry lights, and uh, because Pado Bain's uh, normally that were scared of everything, and so you may miss those opportunities. And uh, so, you put a conscious effort in trying to remember the aspiration, you know, to take rebirth something uh, <clears throat> as a bodhisattva or something beneficial. And when mother and father in union, that's your, you know. A future modern father in in un, in unity and uh, instead of uh, generally the child if it's a male and uh, you know jealous to male uh, and then uh, attached to the, the the female if you're going to be a female you are jealous to did I say right if you're going to take rebirth as a female you're jealous to your mother and then. Uh, uh, attached to father, and if you take rebirth as a, a a boy, a male, and then you are attached to mother and jealous to father. Did I say that? <laughs> this is, but you got my point. I hope. And so instead of uh, really, you know, following those attachments, and uh, you know, uh, and you try to visualize the father, mother as a mother and. Uh, no, uh, female and male deities, they are in the unity of wisdom and compassion. And then you take rebirth uh, so that in the future, uh, you are able to benefit uh, sentient beings. Uh, and uh, so that's why, you know, some of the practitioners able to <clears throat> recognize that and then able to take rebirth and able to benefit. Even they are not uh, someone like reincarnated. A perfect example is like Kimbrumbuchi, like someone is not recognized, someone was, uh, you know, born in a nomadic place and uh, was a shepherd and all of this, and then, you know, escaped from Tibet, you know, went through everything, but because of his uh, pure aspiration and blessing from Guru, and he become, uh, he become him, <laughs> Kimbrumbuchi. <laughs> and uh, so it says, this is the time when Perseverance and pure perception are required. Abandon jealous and uh, meditate on the master and consort. So that is uh, the you know part of becoming. And then it continues. I think conclusion of everything with mind far off and no thought of impending death. And uh, saying that you know some of us, even if we consider as a practitioner, you know always uh, are far from uh, contemplation on death, contemplation of impermanence, performing the meaningless activities of this life only. We are so caught to do everything in this life, uh, which we don't know how long that would be. So we are so caught up, you know, emotionally, uh, physically, mentally, practically, and everything is focused on that. And said to return empty-handed now would be utterly deluded, which means that if we return empty-handed, not practicing dharma, no accumulation of merit, and uh, even though having practiced human birth, and we return like this back to next life, it's very deluded or very sad. I recognize what is needed: the sacred dharma. The dharma is uh, 
uh, practice one that can liberate us. <clears throat> Why not practice it now at this very moment? You no, know? instead of waiting, just practice now. The great com accomplished gurus have said, if you do not keep in mind your master's instruction, are you not deceiving yourself? Yes, we are. <laughs> and you, and you deceiving, <laughs> and you deceiving you. <laughs> so that is actually, you know, a little brief uh, explanation. And uh, I'm not really expert about uh, Pado uh, teachings, uh, but uh, you know, uh, this is uh, something uh, taught by. Uh, the great master Kama Chami uh, Rinpoche, and he had all kind of commentary on Pado, so I had the opportunity to review those, and uh, uh, <clears throat> so I shared some things that I think uh, certain, you know, uh, something that I'm not certain I can't share it because I'm not certain, and uh, so that's pretty much, and then it the last one says, may this root verse of liberation upon hearing in the Pado remain until samsara itself is emptied. So that uh, completes uh, the teaching of uh, this. And uh, if you have any questions on Zoom, sorry, Zoom, I always say, I forget to say hi. <laughs> And uh, if you have any questions related with this <clears throat> weekend teaching or any other topics, and uh, if I know it, I will answer. If I don't, I will be silent. <laughs> I have a question. Mm -hmm. Can anyone hear me? May I start? Yes, please. Okay. If You if, may. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much for the mm -hmm. teaching. What I understood from your comments is that um, the moment when you're going to sleep is somewhat like when you die. Mm -hmm. And if you can remain aware that that's going on, um, mm -hmm. that that's a good thing. Um, and I wondered if you had any suggestions practically on like when I go to sleep tonight, how can I remain aware? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, how can I remain that, aware? That's a wonderful question. Yeah. Yeah, the only difference is, is that it, we won't be dead. Mm -hmm. uh, you, know, you know, good news. Uh, but, the, <laughs> <laughs> but the process is pretty much the same because uh, uh, when we sleep and uh, uh, basically you're physically there, but mentally, you know, totally gone. You know, physically pretty much gone, you are sleeping. But uh, <clears throat> so when, if your physical elements, you know, doesn't kind of dissolve temporarily, you may not be able to sleep. Okay. So you are tired and, uh, you know, you lay down and then, you know, um, it takes practice. And uh, uh, as Kimberly, which you said that, you know, you, you, you be mindful and at times that, you know, before you want to, are aware and you already fall to sleep, so you miss it. But then at sometimes, like you, you know, you don't fall asleep right away. It's not it shouldn't be so you know intense. Just simply, joyfully, gently aware, and then uh, you may you know experience those different dissolution, different lights, and then uh, uh, you know once uh, consciousness, uh, the subtle con, you know, the course you know, thoughts, everything dissolve, and then you. There's always a right to clear light. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it takes, you always, <clears throat> that's why, you know, like in the retreat, we pray to Guru, especially, and then there are a lot of visualizations. But uh, I think because I taught this Pado, it, it has some of those, uh, you know, how to put consciousness about the dream. And so <clears throat> don't put much hope, like, oh, I hope that I will know. Then, just simply pray to Guru and, uh, you know, okay. uh, exercise. And uh, I think that could happen to anyone. So just just take it naturally. Don't don't force anything. Just pray to the Guru. Yeah. No, notice no, what's happening. No, no force. 
no force, no force. Uh, and no expectation, no exaggeration. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and just, uh, just uh, you know, let it be. But as I mentioned, you know, faith, guru, and uh, gathering accumulation of merit, making aspirations are crucial. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm you keep using the crucial because I see that word there. Crucial. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Right and left. I like that. <laughs> yeah, I have a actually two questions, unless mm -hmm. somebody has one. One is uh I've heard that as we are going through the death process, mm -hmm. going through that bardo, uh it's important to keep aware of our what our consciousness is doing mm -hmm. consciousness can project and it looks like monsters and scary things and mm -hmm. uh okay but i have a question about what would happen to uh a person who's dying but they're in a hospital and they're being administered uh, like radical consciousness affecting drugs like morphine mm -hmm. uh, where it kind of takes the consciousness away mm -hmm. awareness of pain away and then if the person dies with this uh, radically altered consciousness I don't think anybody here has ever had that experience but uh, mm -hmm. uh can you say anything about what might happen to that consciousness that's artificially mm -hmm. altered? Someone is uh, not a practitioner, you mean? Yeah, the practitioner mm -hmm. is dying. Yeah. But they're on morphine or uh, some extreme pain relieving right, right. drug mm -hmm. that affects the brain. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're no longer conscious mm -hmm. of what we're projecting uh, i see where mm -hmm. does that leave us if, if this person is a genuine practitioner these mm -hmm. things does not affect because this drugs morphine does not uh, have power to stop the clear light that's where they recognize the clear light and they will liberate and able to meditate you know oh. um but uh, <clears throat> because, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> if it's a real practitioner and uh, the dissolution of the you know, physical body, all those lights, you know, maybe it doesn't matter because what matters is that once you physically fully dissolved, you know, you passed away mm -hmm. and then mentally, you know, arise the clear light and they instantly recognize that. So they won't be uh confusion if this is a genuine practitioner <clears throat> so okay so we're kind of beyond mm -hmm. at that point beyond the mechanical brain with yes, the mechanical I, drug yeah, and, absolutely uh, yeah oh uh, okay that's encouraging <laughs> that's it encouraging. Is very encouraging you know that's why the meditation is uh crucial ah, i use that yeah. crucial yeah and uh, uh, another quick question is, mm -hmm. you know, where did these teachings come from? I've heard mm. you know, it came from Guru Rinpoche, but, mm -hmm. you know, nobody's died and actually gone on and then came back and said, hey, here's what happens. You know, mm -hmm. you, that's a wonderful I question. I think uh, in uh, Buddha's, of course, originally Buddha did talk about uh, you know dying, death, and all of these uh, uh, things. But in Guru Rinpoche, especially <clears throat> uh, detailed, and he mm. hide or he buried or let's hide so many treasures, uh, mm. the teachings and uh, document instructions, and then uh, he projected just like I kind of shared the other day that the the treasure founder, he kind of predicted in the future, I, you know, this particular teaching, this particular Therma master will, his name is this, this is the time, and this is the location he will discover, which exactly happened. So there are hundreds, thousands of Therma Tirtanis. So that's why you know, Guru Rinpoche is so kind. 
Mm. <laughs> you know what he left Gurumbuche and his consort Ishitsoja, they left so many treasure teachings. Mm. Mm. And then actually to the point, uh, you know, there are <clears throat> even like uh, ordinary individuals, we call them Delo. Delo mm. means one die and return. And there in Tibet, we have very well known Delos that they, you know, die. And then uh, maybe like one week, their physical body seem like, you know, still breathing, you know, look like, uh, you know, dead, but still is. Yeah. But no, no, no any activity. And then they come back, they bring all the information, including some of the, your relatives, where they passed, uh, where they die, where they reborn, uh, et cetera. And there are many returning, we call them, and there are many actually female, Kind of you know uh, practitioners, the very well known practitioners, uh -huh. and they come back and they uh, write this all this uh, you know, volumes of texts, and, uh, and in Tibet it's very well known to go mm. to them and say where my relative or my dog or my yaks you know passed away where they are, and uh, they never been to those places, but there's a uh, you know, uh, very ominous. Uh, you know, uh, the practitioners able to say, "Oh, yeah, your, 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 your relative is." You know, sometimes you know they just simply say, even if you don't ask. Oh, your relative is born there. Her name is this, that, and like, yeah, they are still, uh, uh, you know, exist. And mm. uh, yeah, you know, it's very interesting because there's been a lot of research in recent mm -hmm. decades in America uh, and Europe on. Uh, people who have died but been mm -hmm. revived mm -hmm. and they all tell the same story, you know, regardless oh. of country, you know, we go yeah. through this process and it mm -hmm. sounds a lot like what the Tibetans have been teaching for yeah. generations. So right, there's right. exciting uh, mm -hmm. precedent with that. Yeah. Thank I, you. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. I, you know, I'm also a little bit addicted with uh, YouTube and I always research that on YouTube, you can find uh, there are, you know, researchers that, you know, the, the, the boys and the girls, they could remember past lives. And uh, they have documented hundreds of thousands of them, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, reincarnation is really real, you know, and uh, yes. <clears throat> Thank you, Lama. Uh, You're welcome. Well, the opposite of the questions from the mm -hmm. gentleman. So what if the the person that died is not a practitioner? So mm -hmm. my late husband, he was a Christian, mm -hmm. and uh, I started to um, learn and heard and start following the Bardo teaching. And I was told that um, when a person died, if they died suddenly, you know, with violence, usually they're conscious. I heard it's going to be very confused. Mm -hmm. But then again, based on what I believe in the Bardo's realm, there will be this lightning, this, uh, like you said, rain, thunders, and scary images. How do we guide them? I mean, I want to be consciously, well, not me, but as best as I could, you know, like I, mm -hmm. I'm reciting Karma Pacheno and I'm uh, Om Mami Dewari and then to him, but how do I know that he could cure me? I heard that conscious will travel for 49 days in our human realm, but then again, I feel like I need to, I don't know, save him? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah um, thank you. you know, there are uh, sometimes friends of me that are not a Buddhist, and when they die, you know, sometimes I get to go there and uh, Instead, instead of explaining all these new theories to them, I simply say, because they believe in God and they believe <clears throat> in pure, I mean, the heaven, and I say, you simply visualize God is there with light and just go to heaven. And I really, really think that, uh, you know, uh, we shouldn't, uh, you know, kind of, we should do prayers, but shouldn't, Think about Buddhism theory to, you know, someone is never have any theory about it. And I think uh, some really, you know, uh, conservative Christian 
they have so much faith in God. They have, you know, there's a heaven and uh, they <clears throat> definitely, I'm not sure there's a pure room they go to. I'm not sure there's in life, but definitely they will take good rebirth, you know. So if there's a good question, you just simply respect them. But meanwhile, there's nothing wrong to, uh, you know, uh, dedicate whatever merit you can, uh, you know, uh, 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 dedicate for, for for him or her, right? But uh, when they at the time of death, we don't we shouldn't mix up with Buddhism ideas. Animal, yeah, animal. Kimberly always said that you know they say to Amani pay me home. You know at the time of death you can't talk. You know or you can guide, but you always they say to Amani pay me home. They were to uh, the recitation and because that you know they may die peacefully. And uh, as I mentioned, anybody, family member, whether they are Buddhist or not, uh, uh, animal in, in Tibet, you know, they're uh, and in Tibet, mostly Buddhist. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we we do, even like Buddhist, like uh, the family, they die, even like maybe 10 years past, we still dedicate for them, you know, you know, lighting lamps, everything. My mother passed away in 2016, but I always dedicate for her, you know, it's been like a, Eight years, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you again, Lama. Um, my father just passed away and my mother is close to death. Thank you. But mm -hmm. I, I have lots of questions as mm -hmm. a result of that. So mm -hmm. I appreciate you taking my second question. Mm -hmm. so, um, you mentioned a couple of times over the weekend, well, two things. One, that after somebody passes, they, they can be in meditation. Mm -hmm. uh, for a certain amount of time and um, not to touch the body for mm -hmm. three days. H how do you know if someone is in meditation or not? My, mm -hmm. my, when my father passed, I was very involved with um, mm -hmm. preparing his body. And mm -hmm. um, I just, I just, if you could shed any light on that. Uh, mostly the real, you know, genuine practitioners, uh, and uh, there are many signs, for example, like uh, uh, <clears throat> as I mentioned earlier, you know, my uncle, Kimbrumbachi, passed away. His face was more live, yes. more, you know, how do you say, <clears throat> med, what's what, radiant than before. And also his skin, if you talk like this, it's just, uh, just like now, you know, we touch here, the skin goes back. Mm -hmm. And also his nose doesn't go like this. Especially most important, obvious, <clears throat> is that his heart is always warm. Mm -hmm. Heart is always warm. There's a warmth in the heart. There's in the, if somebody, you know, for example, like when my other uncle recently passed away, he was in uh, meditation for three days. After three days, then instantly his body is cold. Yes. You know, there's no uh, yes. heat in the heart. So those are uh, indications. And uh, when you also, you know, the the body is in meditation later on, if you somewhat, you know, so there's some tradition they put up, sit up, and they, you know, sit pretty good, you know, without using too much uh, other yes. elements. Okay. So it's mainly, you know, <clears throat> those great meditators, not everybody could do that. Yes. And, uh, yes. you know, yeah, my, my father, um, you know, his chest sunk. Um, so, so okay, enough, enough of that. My, my other question was um, about consciousness. You also mentioned over the weekend that you can eject consciousness at mm -hmm. the time of death, and 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 I'm guessing that that's a very advanced practitioner that could do that. But mm -hmm. but I wondered if you could speak a little bit about that 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 mm -hmm. technique and and what what that's like. Yeah, it's called POA, and, uh, you know, individuals who practice or study POA, they, you know, have to, you know, f do the preliminary practice and uh, Amitabha practice and then recite, the, you know, uh, according to my teacher, 600,000, the mantras. Then you have to go through, you know, very advanced, a little bit of study about visualization with uh, Lamas, I think Lama Kathy, Read that many times, and uh, so it's it's kind of uh, quite advanced, uh, yes. and uh, so 
all the requires uh, <clears throat> happened, you know, uh, I mean, hap, you know, all of those requires uh, achieved, then you, you know, the Lama will teach how to go through uh, step by step, what kind of chanting and when to, what to visualize, etc. So it's a goal. Huh? It's a goal for us <laughs> to be able to do that. But yeah, yeah, it's a, yeah. It's a very special practice, you know. Yeah. All of this, uh, you know, and uh, individuals that are different, you know, they have a way to practice. But this is one of the important goals for sure. Sure, and it is one way that you can control when you die, right? That if you can eject your consciousness. I see uh, my parents. It, uh, it you know take you to we call Amitabha's pure realm. There's Amitabha's pure realm. The moment you are born there, even now, right now we are suffering. Everything you the moment you are born in the Amitabha's pure realm, you are already achieved. We call first Bhumi Bodhisattva level, and uh, so you will never go back to suffering, mm -hmm. and we're able to benefit many sentient beings. Thank you. You are welcome. <laughs> Uh, several several questions have come in from Zoom, if I may ask those. Okay. I, I have one question from yesterday. Are you able to hear me mm -hmm. well enough? Okay. okay. Um, let's see. You were talking about the three causes of precious human birth. The first one was that a person practiced Dharma in a previous life and achieved what vows? Apparently you said they achieved a certain vow mm -hmm. in a previous life. Do you remember what vow that was? Mm. That's it? That, that's the question. <laughs> what what vow were you referring to? You know, whenever I talk about one, two, three, I always don't make two, three. So <laughs> be prepared. <laughs> uh, this part is I like, kind of familiar, so I may not able to make it, you know, we have to... Um, knock on wood. <laughs> Someone knock on the head. <clears throat> so, <laughs> so first, uh, uh, cause to take rebirth as a fresh human birth is that. Uh, let's put it this way: we have fresh human birth. What does fresh human birth means? That uh, we're born in a place where you have uh, teachers and the dharma and. Uh, you are able to practice. So that is what precious human birth. It, ha it the loca Location doesn't distinguish, you know, in different individual, nothing. It's just about the opportunity. <clears throat> and uh, according to Shantin Deva, you know, the, the precious human birth uh, is not out of uh, no way. It has, uh, you know, we must uh, practice to moral discipline. In, in past lives, we must uh, took different vows and protect vow and uh, you know maintain your vow. That is the main cause. And secondly, you must practice to the six parameters like generosity, moral discipline, patience, <clears throat> diligence, concentration, and uh, uh parameter and the six parameters. And uh, lastly, you must make a lot of aspirations. It made a lot of aspiration to take rebirth as a human being. So if you individual did those three causes, then that's how we can uh, achieve a uh, you know fresh human birth. Thank you. I did it. Thank you. Okay. Um, let's see. And this is from Julie, and she wants to say thank you so much for the teaching. Yeah, you're um, welcome. How can we best prepare for the time of death yeah. to avoid rebirth? Sorry, I missed that. I was okay. That's fine. Mm -hmm. um, how can we best prepare to uh, prepare for the time of death to avoid rebirth or to get to Amitabha's pure land? Um, any further references for practicing dream yoga? And um, let's see. Oh, and she said she would humbly she would like to offer that this may be very elementary, but I read recently that keeping a dream journal to better remember your dreams is helpful. Um, mm. I'm not sure what. Lamala's thoughts about that arc. I hope this helps someone. So, uh, I would say that I got the first part. Am I doing something wrong? It feels like it's coming off. But maybe I, I, you just just live like this, right? It's okay, 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 okay. Yeah, because if I keep touching, it was <clears throat> uh, first. Uh, 
you know, question, uh, how do we you know, uh, go to Devachin or Parsamitabha? <clears throat> and uh, I probably didn't say exactly what she said, but that was the point. And uh, um, in order to take rebirth in Amitabha's purum, there are, we call four causes to take rebirth in Amitabha's purum. Uh, one is a uh, uh, recollection of uh, uh, the pure um, Amitabha and Amitabha's pure um, uh, and visualizing, for example, like uh, the aspiration and prayer of Sukhavad by Chamirabhuche Chami is a complete uh, you know, practice of the four causes. And then the second is uh, uh, gathering accumulation of merit and purifying negative karma. Uh, by performing the uh, 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 the seven uh, branch prayer, and then third is uh, uh, generating bodhicitta, and the last is uh, aspiration, which is the last part of the uh, Sukhabad prayer. So those are we call four causes to take rebirth in Amitabha's Purim, and uh, most important among all of those, you know, is the trust or conviction or confidence because this is Amitabha's uh, statement if you practice the four <clears throat> four causes then you will take rebirth in Amitabha's pure and uh, that is the first then the second I kind of missed uh, she was just asking if you thought that uh, keeping a dream journal could be helpful just in general what was that? where you write down your dreams after you wake up Do you what? You have a diary in sleep? <laughs> no. No, you yeah. mean like if you have a dream of a diary, you write it down, I got diary in sleep, dream? No, no, you, it's where we, when you wake up first thing in the morning, you write down what dreams you had. Oh, okay, I see what dreams you have. Yes. Um. Because you know it's related with the um, uh, part of dream, possibly. Oh, okay. I think that's not necessary. You know, dreams are dream, but what necessary is that you know how you miss the dream. <laughs> and uh, one of the crucial now I like to use the crucial part point two of the practice of dream is. Uh, not just only concerned about dream, rather you see during the day, whatever you do, whatever you saying, it's like considered as a dream, illusory. Then you have much better opportunity at the, the time of sleep, you know, recognition. Yes, thank you for waiting. Thank you. Um, uh... I think I'm a rookie practitioner. You are a rookie I'm a practitioner. Rookie, I'm a rookie yeah, practitioner. I'm a, I'm a I'm very rookie at Lama. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I feel like uh, when you first learn about the bardo and what the yeah. bardo is, one of the first things you sort of hear about is the 49 days. Mm -hmm. And so I'm wondering if you just talk a little bit more about that, but also mm -hmm. as a rookie practitioner, uh, what can I do? I don't have advanced practices. If someone close to me mm -hmm. passes away, what can I do mm -hmm. during those 49 days mm. uh, for them? Wonderful question. Um, first, uh, uh, the first uh, 21 days, the individual who passed away kind of see him or herself her own form, you know, whatever that form was. Bye-bye. All right. Maybe. So you kind of see, you know, like, uh, I don't want to take your example, but, you know, example, just example, right? If you after 108 years when you pass, <laughs> 108 years I said that, right? uh, so I may have a long life. 
And so when you pass until 21 days, you know, uh, uh, you can see yourself, you know, you as Michael. And then after 21 days, until 49, up to like 21, 22, all the way to 49, you see a, the next rebirth, whether it could be an animal or individual, that's what the, the Padus uh, kind of, you know, uh, what they see. Uh, and uh, so every week, you know, in, in the traditionally in Tibet, like uh, 49 days is very, very important because even you are good, not a good practitioner, and because the relatives and uh, friends, if they really perform, that's why, in, you know, like when my mother passed away, and we <clears throat> uh, uh, cremated her with the Akshobaya fire puja, and then we invite uh, like four monks, and they do these uh, different rituals, uh, you know, throughout the 49 days. So if this individual is, you know, have a lot of negative karma, but because of this uh, close relationship with your friends, families, they're just uh, lighting lamps and doing all the pujas and it will immense support for the, the individual. So that's what, you know, it's so important, the 49 days. Uh, what is that one? Oh, that's, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And if uh, your close friend, whether it's a Buddhist or not, it doesn't matter. They always need prayer. So what you can do, the first thing in my mind, as always came from this uh, light 49 days uh, lamp, you know, at, uh, you know, the center or any center or KTD or wherever you can do that. And then every day when you practice, maybe you, <clears throat> will have a picture of him or her and, you know, put on your table and kind of a re good reminder. So you dedicate this merit, you know, every time you practice, dedicate for the person. Uh, <clears throat> and, uh, of course, then, you know, in Tibet tradition, we ask you know, other monasteries or other lamas, to, you know, personally request to pray for for them and so you can also do that as well so whatever meritorious actions you can perform it's very beneficial you're welcome yes <clears throat> i actually don't have a question i just wanted to offer um a possible resource for some people yes I please recently read this book called dreaming yourself awake mm. uh entitled lucid dreaming and tibetan dream yoga for insight and transformation. Mm. Um, and it really addresses a lot of the questions that have been asked about dream journals and right. about um, becoming lucid during your sleep to practice yoga while you were sleeping um, and also assisting in the transitory state um, mm -hmm. through through the, the dark part of dying. Um, it's written by Alan Wallace and I just uh, thought I might offer that as mm, it. Thank you. Yeah. It's called Dreaming Yourself Awake, um, lucid dreaming, and Tibetan dream yoga for insight and transformation. Early ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thank you for these wonderful teachings. Oh, first thank, of all. You so thank you for having me. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I also wanted to mention a resource for folks. Um, the Gainesville KTC website under their events area has recorded teachings from when Kempo Tenkyong mm. KTD taught dream yoga. Mm. And those are still available. There are 22 videos and I believe they have a, a price tag of $20 or something. Um, so that's the Gainesville KTC site. I just wanted to mention that for folks. Uh, and I had a general question if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I see different lamas and Rinpoches and Kempos mm -hmm. wearing different types of Zens. Is mm -hmm. there a Zen that I could wear in my practice at home? Mm -hmm. what, yeah. are your, what are your thoughts on that? Thank you. Uh, that's a wonderful question. You know, I think uh, at the time of Kembo uh, Rinpoche, you know, he mainly presented uh, the Zens to lamas who done three retreat. And uh, then uh, uh, <clears throat> slowly, when the Yuni practice 
the fasting practice came up. Uh, no, no, sorry. I, I, I just went too far. When uh, his holiness come up, uh, uh, you know, led this uh, cardiomelum and bodhigaya and all this. And uh, uh, so a lot of people, you know, wear this shawl, like shawl zen, white zens, and uh, uh, <clears throat> like uh, when he taught the Parajina Paramita. And so that kind of, you know, uh, how do you say, slowly spread out. And then at KTD, you know, we have uh, uh, the lay practitioners when they do the Muni practice, you know, because Muni practice is like uh, uh, China is uh, white, everything white. They just presented the, the white Zen. And uh, that's how it came about. But uh, I don't really have much uh, understanding and recommendations. If His Holiness kind of in the future says everybody should wear Zen, uh, like uh, lay, as long as lay practitioner, you wear whatever, you know, like uh, Zen color he would recommend, you know. Other than that, you know, I really don't know what to say. And because those are the two occasions I remember people used the Zen. There are three more questions or mm -hmm. people with questions from Zoom, if, if that is okay with you. Last one. Excuse me. Uh, Kevin says, Lama La, I have been very ill for quite some time and may be approaching my death. My main practice is karma pakshi. What advice does Lama La have for employing my karma pakshi practice at the time of death? Mm. And, yeah. And there's a slight follow up, but please go, with, mm -hmm. go ahead with that. I, I really think that uh, you know any practice you do, you know, if especially like a uh, time of death, if you are very, you did practice well, I'm pretty sure karma part will arise at the time of death. Not necessarily have to have Amitabha. There was a uh, like collection of Amitabha uh, teachings, and one of the story talk about there was one uh, calm area, one. Uh, uh, gentleman, you know, he believed that, uh, you know, Amitabha is a uh, blue color. And everybody said, no, you know, it's uh, it's red. He said, no, my Amitabha is blue. <laughs> at the time of death, he said, look at them, you know, the Amitabha blue and all the retinues are blue. They came, you know, come to me. So, you know, and uh, so I think uh, if someone practiced the medicine Buddha, at the time of death, they will have medicine Buddha's vision take to their pure house. So it's all, it's good, you know? In fact, uh, Kamapash is manifestation of Cheneze, and Cheneze is the antenate of Amitabha, but they have a lot of those connections. <laughs> okay, wonderful, thank you. <laughs> and uh, he followed up with, uh, what are the best practices for me to engage in at this time and at the time of my death? Which I think you kind of just answered. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry, what is? Um, he just was asking in general what are the best practices for him to do to be doing now and at the time of his death. Oh, okay. I think uh, you know, depending on individuals' aspiration, if they want to go to Amitabha's pure home, then Amitabha practice, and if they are, uh, you know, just to want to realize the nature of mind, then. Uh, do more meditation. So there are a lot of uh, you know, options. Okay. Uh, Chuck asks, I read in the sutra... Another Chuck? Hmm? Another Chuck? Yes. <laughs> um, Chuck asks, I read in the sutra of the past vows of earth store Bodhisattva that when dying, our sight and hearing dissolve and it's as if we fall into a stupor. If we don't recognize the clear light, is it because we are still in a stupor? If so, will practice help us not be in such a stupor and help us to recognize the clear light? I think I need help on that, Lama. What about stupor? Uh, oh, stupid. Okay. So what it has to do with the clear light? <laughs> um, if, okay. sorry. Well, because when we're dying, our sight and our hearing dissolve, and it's as if we fall into a stupor. Oh, stupor. Okay, okay. now I got it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, well, the clear light arrives after the stupor. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, you are, we are already dead. 
and uh, you know, there's no anxious wait what's next. I think it naturally arises. And whether you recognize the nature of mind, it's up to individual's practice and uh, you know how you practice during the time of the uh, um, your life, especially, you know, we call right conditioning at the time of the death. If, even like you are good, great, great practitioner, sometimes like so many disturbances around you, like, you know, a lot of, you know, people doing a lot of things, sometimes uh, that may disturb, but uh, generally after really stupor, total black and blank, and then arrive the, uh, the uh, clear light. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And Kay asks, when we prepare for sleep, is it helpful to consciously go through a dissolution process? Smoke, mirage, fireflies, butter lamps, pure white light, reddish light, sunset, bluish light, twilight, and clear light transparent. Uh, that's a wonderful question. You know, good question. I can't uh, say much, but uh, it has to be natural though, not something like uh, create something. And I think most important is uh, one of the position when you sleep is to, you sleep right side down and put your right hand, just like a Buddha person, right? It's considered you know, great opportunity to recognize the process and also clear light. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. What time is it? I Three thirty-four. Three. Oh, I have. Oh, okay. We have. Uh, we still have more than fifteen minutes. <laughs> Please, you know, take your time. We have more. Some time, maybe yeah. one or two we questions. Have, we have a little time. If is, you mean more questions? Mm -hmm. Are you saying it's okay to ask more? Uh, Lama, whatever. I think oh, yes. it's okay. uh, yes. three thirty-five. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. Then, uh, then for those who are uh, going to stay, uh, we have um, we want to thank Lama Karma first of all for his wonderful teachings, and really express our appreciation. Mm, thank you uh, for you bringing the Dharma to us and uh, representing the Dharma and, of course, our founder. Um, also, uh, he's offered some things uh, that uh, we could use for our raffle drawing. And I think <laughs> before we make our final offering to him, he said that would be the good time to yeah, uh, yeah to to draw the uh, the names uh, of the those who have won items in the drawing. So uh, thanks to all who bought the tickets. And uh, I think, I think he's got all the. He has all the tickets. How would you oh. like to? How would you like to do this? I will pull. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. He's yeah. So, would you like to put them? Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. Uh huh. We have a technical problem. It's okay. Yeah. No? Okay. Well, the but yes. Okay. We we need to find the key. So what do you yeah. think the <laughs> Bethany is Maybe getting key? That's the, the Bethany like that. is getting the key. Okay, very good. This this feels like a weird contrast with the Bardo to have a <laughs> raffle. I don't know. He's in a Bardo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um we uh, we we may need to delay this part. Oh, no problem, but I would like to really say that, you know, thank you so much, you know, having me back, you know, you are not tired of me, you know, that's uh, very inspiring for me. <laughs> but most importantly, you know, um, these centers, you know, <clears throat> KTCs, you know, part of uh, KTD and, uh, you know, KTD is like a hub for Kimberly Mbuche, uh, our late uh, teacher and, uh, uh, as I mentioned before, um, even though I was, tra you know, uh, traveling like eight years or something centers, but I was like struggling about teaching and don't know how to talk, how to relate. And uh, Rinpoche simply said that if you give one word of advice to one person or give one refuge vow to one person that is already serving Dharma. So I was very encouraged and... Uh, <clears throat> I think uh, you know this uh, 
I can say that Adam Rich is blessing and, uh, you know, one of the highest uh, uh, you know, offering to you know, Rinpoche. Uh, and uh, uh, at the same time, I think, you know, I'm very, very happy, you know, I could see from, uh, you know, uh, different uh, sources like uh, Facebook, or other places, the how Clumps KTC's activities. Of course, I've been here in person a few times, and uh, you are also very uh, fortunate to have, uh, you know, you have a wonderful teacher, Lama Kathy and Lama Tom, you know, there are many, many uh, other teachers, and it's so, so wonderful. And I'm very, very happy because uh, <clears throat> uh, Lama Kathy and uh, is uh, you know one of which is a very special uh, uh you know uh, student and uh, <clears throat> he i shared the other day you know at the dinner table or something you know but you always have a uh you know every time she comes he always have something to share for the center because he knows that she's all mainstream about the center and the spread in dharma and uh you know sometimes you no know, when you have to, here and then uh, very excited about other visitors, other teachers, but sometimes kind of forget how, uh, you know, important, how lucky that you have uh, uh, someone so special right in front of you. So I'm very, very happy you have a wonderful guide. Uh, and uh, those of you who, you know, be part of the center and never been to KTD, please do come to KTD also, because KTD is the way that everything emerged. <laughs> and I think what happened is that when you go to KTD, oh, wow, it's very inspiring. And then that's the, your home monastery. And then from there, kind of emerge all these branch centers and you will be very inspired. And also you could <clears throat> see like uh, the... Uh, legacy of uh, Kim Rinpoche, how he tirelessly, you know, established a three-year retreat and all of this. And then lastly, you know, we are extremely, you know, um, fortunate to be under the guidance of His Holiness Kamapa uh, and all of his teachings, online teachings, and all of these uh, blessings. And we continue to pray for his long life and Dhamma activities. And uh, so I also thank to everybody, you know, place where I stay, like you know, Bill and Kim, and I really, you know, very, very uh, having a good time for practice and, you know, uh, playing with the, <clears throat> the animals, not so much with uh, Bella, she's big, I'm a little bit scared. Oh, Bella, oh, Bella, okay, okay, Bella, Bella, Bella. <laughs> but, you know, and also, you know, all these volunteers, everybody, thank you for the drivers, thank you so, so much, sponsors. And without your effort or your generosity, you know, this KTC will not be available. So I'm very much, you know, so much rejoice. It's key back. <laughs> uh, um, first of all, I'd like to say thank you to the uh, sponsor. Mm -hmm. uh, uh the sponsor donors for this uh yeah, for this event uh two of them are not here this afternoon um uh, ann hetzel i don't see ann so ann hetzel and um uh Ong Yi, uh they are both and they'll receive their gifts later but um we have some um we have a couple of uh agate beautiful get um malas if you would uh, come up, Stephen and Marilyn, and receive your gift from. Uh, so, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. for our mm. it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, one goes to Marilyn. Thank you. One goes to Stephen. Oh, thank you, Marilyn. Yeah, thank you so much. Yes, thank you for your gift. <laughs> ah, thank you. Mm. Thank you so much. So much. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, through their generosity, uh, several people who did not have funds were able to attend. So thank you. Okay. Now, I think we're ready. And now? Now? The and uh, first... uh, name the item first. Oh, pick one item. Mladepa, of course. Oh. Mladepa. It's a beautifully filled, possibly filled by the Kimberumbuchi. Oh, I want to put it in my pocket. So the lucky winner is... <laughs> 